Hey everybody, I'm Meredith Doty and this is Sweating Shirtless. Every episode, I dive deep into unpacking the fitness world through a body confident and inclusive lens while picking the brains of inspiring, brilliant, accomplished, honest, new and old friends talking about their experience with Sweating Shirtless. Hello fam! Thank you for listening and watching this episode of Sweating Shirtless. I thought that I'd make a change and start kind of speaking you, speaking to you directly before each episode and give you just a little tidbit into my life. So I figured I'd start at the beginning and talk about how Workout with Marin, how Sweating Shirtless was kind of born. And it really started that by my experience in starting with the fitness industry. When I started, there was really no one in my circle or no one at the gyms and studios that I went to as a client that looked like me. Um, I didn't like see anyone that didn't have six pack abs and did look like flawless on the bike when they were spinning. And I really, that stuck out to me and I felt like I couldn't be an instructor because I didn't look like them. Um, And I held myself back for a long time before making the jump into doing something that I knew that I really wanted to do, which was become a spin instructor. Um, And I really didn't think that people would take me seriously because of what I looked like. And honestly, some didn't. Some really didn't. Um, I was told that I wasn't in shape enough. I just, I would crush work. Um, I would crush auditions and like they'd give me just so such lame feedback back. Um, and, but you know, some people did give me a chance and I have made it and I persevered and I pushed through and I keep level up leveling myself and pushing myself up through every milestone because I'm really, I'm in it and I'm passionate about it. And I, the thing about it is, I think at first it was a little bit for myself, but now I really want to somehow give a fraction of the confidence and the understanding that I've gotten and gained as being part of this industry to you um, to let you know that you can go after what you want, no matter, does not matter what you look like, what your experience is. If you're passionate about it, you go for it. Um even now, now that I'm in the fitness industry, I've been teaching spin for over five years. Um, I sometimes even get down on myself. I feel like my fitness colleagues, things just come easy for them. They are blessed genetically and they just look so fit and they can hit milestones left and right and it comes easy to them. And sometimes I feel like it's three times harder for me to do the same things. But I'm realizing that maybe from the outside looking in, everyone looks like things are easy for them because that's just what they're showing the world. The thing about me, I am my Instagram workout with Mayor. This is me. I'm trying to be as authentic as possible. Possible. So I'm sick of feeling like everyone has it easy. I want to just pull back my curtain a little bit and show you that Things are challenging for me and I push through because I'm passionate about it and I really want to get there. Um, whether it be becoming an, an instructor at a top fitness studio in Boston, whether it be hitting um, a certain milestone in my fitness, a goal, fitness goal that I have, whatever it may be, I choose a goal and I go after it and I I want to show you the struggles that I go through because I think that's important. It's a lot of times we see just the end result, the trophy, the medal, the picture on Instagram, but we don't see what it took to get there. Um, And I'm just, that's what I'm passionate about showing you guys the back behind the scenes curtain, the VIP. And on Spotting Shirtless, I try to show you that, through these interviews, people in the industry or even not in the industry, they have their struggles too. Um, and I'm trying to help you put an end to any limiting thoughts of self-doubt and get on with living your best life. And that is how Workout With Mayor and Sweaty Shirtless was born.
All right, welcome to a sweating shirtless. Today, my guest is Nick Coffin, a strongman athlete, certified personal trainer, and all around fitness expert who also happens to be my personal trainer. We discuss how he got started in the fitness industry, what he thinks every personal trainer should do to pivot with the changes COVID-19 has brought to the industry, and how he went viral on TikTok. Let's get into it. Um, with a little bit of Tito's and Capri Sun. No, oh. it's not. <laughs> Yeah. The Coffin Powell uh, apartment keeps uh, keeps Capri Sun on lock. Is it really Capri Sun and Tito's? It's really Capri Sun, Pacific Cooler, you can't go wrong. What Tito's? Yes, yeah, it's Sunday, baby. I mean, I could, I do have champagne, I could make a mimosa. Right, you know, I mean, I thought that's what we were doing, but. I thought that was too, but then, I don't know, we did it. That's Hell why I got the man. coffee. Hello. Yeah, no, that's true. You, you do have the iced coffee, you know, give you that one. You should be sponsored by Duncan. I know, I really should at this point. You just need a couple more viral TikToks and then we'll get there. Because I feel like I put a lot of business, you know, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like a lot of Bostonians probably feel that way, though. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, though. <clears throat> no, yeah, no. I feel like yeah. I only, I make my own. M-Y-O coffee. Anyways, thank you, Nick, for joining Sweating Shirtless. Yeah, Welcome. Nick. I see we're thank doing great today. Me. I'm excited. <laughs> of I'm course, excited. yeah. I was just thinking earlier when I was just thinking, getting my thoughts together on our chat, how long we've known each other. Years. I've known yeah, you longer yeah, than yeah, I've known you. Yeah, it's been a while now. And you don't realize it, too, just because there's been like a lot of segmented chapters in it you know like especially now like this year you know obviously that's it just seems like there's been so many events in it and it's just like kind of you know it's one of those things where you know yeah, really we've gone through years, like three years we've yeah gone through a lot of um life changes together that's true yeah you know i've been there i've been around for a lot of a lot of big things in your life and yeah i like to think we can say the same yeah for sure for sure um so we met when I used to teach at a box gym and you were a personal trainer there as well. That's how yeah. we kind of got together. And then I realized I needed personal training and a beautiful friendship was born. Exactly, a beautiful friendship, yeah. <laughs> but how long have you been personal training? Um, I guess like including the years at BSC, five plus now. So when yeah. did you? Years when did you realize that's like the career path you wanted to go down? So when I was uh, when I was in high school, actually middle school even, my cousin was my personal trainer. So I don't know. I just I, th I think I trained with him for like six or seven years, um, and I just always thought it was like such a cool job. You know, I would show up to his to his gym after school. And it was just like, he was doing that all day. You know, he was just like, just hanging out with people, like having conversations the way like you and I have conversations. And like, you know, you can imagine how like, that's, uh, you know, a, a you know, fun job, obviously. And then, you know, at that age, I just really thought that was, uh, you know, like a cool, cool path to go down. So I don't know, I think mostly like his influence was the reason that I chose to be a personal trainer. But I mean, I was like, I always found myself strong and like, I enjoy working out. So, you know, there was obviously that piece as well, but you know, his influence. But you weren't always so, you know, the fat Nick that we know and love. You weren't always so <laughs> muscular. Yeah, that's true. I was, really you know, I was like 130 pounds when I graduated high school. Yeah. So how did you go? What was like, but you had already been personal training with your cousin. So what made you go from that kind of training to the training that you do now to put on mass is that the correct term but i'm bulk uh, i get like no well strongman like strongman like what i'm doing now um competing in strongman is like more just the pursuit of strength and like seeing you know what you can get your body to do and in the respect of like strength performance doesn't necessarily i mean obviously like we get bigger and you know as we get stronger um but it's not it's not like the pursuit of size you know we're not trying to necessarily just get bigger um you know when i was in high school you know it was lifting for wrestling i was a wrestler in high school and you know i just wanted to get stronger so that i was better at my sport um 
and then you know after high school it was just you know kind of the bro thing like you know just working out to, to work out you know what i mean just like uh you know got to keep up appearances kind of thing you know you're 19 and like you know it's, it's pretty much all it's, you know, it's all it's about at that point um yep. and then so then i started working at psc when i was 20. um after a couple of years of being you know an idiot after high school i decided to you know choose a career path and that's when you know i started personal training was when i was 20. um and then you know I think for a couple of years I had known Stan, you know, so this is, you know, from 20 to 22, you know, Stan, you know, our, our friend, Mr. Shoulders. Um, yep. <laughs> Your fellow um, strongman competitor. Yes, exactly. Yeah. A little, you say a little strongman competitor. Your fellow. Hello. Oh, I thought you said a little strong. He's, he's a large boy. He's, yeah, but you know. <laughs> Definitely not little. Oh no, yeah. I'll tell him that though. I'll tell him that you should call him a little. <laughs> Yeah, um, sure. Let so him know. He, yeah, he um, he basically he kind of pushed me into strongman and like pushed me into you know that sport. Yeah, you know, um, while we were working together still at BSC, and he said, you know, you're kind of strong, like you should try the sport, and I think you would do you know fairly well in it. And um, I think like that's you know where I shifted into strongman was was with his influence. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, well, I like to think so, yeah. yeah but. Well, so two things. Before we get into Strongman, I want to go back to your choice to go into personal training because I know you said it was like a fun career path to go down, but yeah. a fun having a fun job is only fun for so long. Every job is a job. So what yeah. keeps you checked in and what keeps you wanting to progress in your career, get more clients, you know, be more successful? Like, where does the passion kick in? Um, you know, it's funny, like, honestly, this, like, the more I learn um, and the more I'm able to apply to myself, you know, it might even sound selfish, but, the, you know, straight up, like, the more I learn, I can apply those things to myself. And I learn a lot by training my clients. I learn a lot by guinea pigging people, um, you know, so it's it really i mean like i said it might sound selfish but it's it's a lot for my own growth and it benefits me you know again like i'm competing in the sport of strongman right now so you know there's there's no room for error when you're trying to get you know to a higher and higher level of competition so um just applying that knowledge to my own training and myself and um you know having that carry over into my own sport my own benefit you know that's kind of driving motivation behind you know, what gets me to learn more and what gets me to uh, train my clients more effectively. So, I mean, as far as like what gets me out of like what makes me do my job well, I would say that's what it is. Um, other than that, I mean, like what gets me out of bed is, you know, the, the good clients, you know, there's there's some clients that I've had at, uh, you know, in the past where we don't really, we don't really think the same way or, um, you know, we don't really get along. There's just clients that, you know, even if, you know, they're doing things right and you're a good coach, there's sometimes just not, you know, you're just not the right fit for a person. Um, so, you know, I, I guess, so true, though. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, what keeps me going with those clients is, you know, the clients that are good, like good fit for me, you know, they're, they're easy to work with. Um, you know, I have some clients that just, you know, the, the goals they're looking to achieve are like right up my alley. And I understand that, you know, there's clients like you or like, you know, you're very driven and like, you want to learn more, you, you know, like retaining information, you know, and so people like that and people like you, um, you know, make my job like a lot more enjoyable. So it's like, it's a Plus combination. I'm just a yeah. fitness star. So it's like a breeze, you know, <laughs> too much, so. <laughs> sometimes too much, but you know, it's whatever. <laughs> I feel like the biggest thing, at least in like the first year of us working, was getting me to just like slow the hell down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, oh, what, what was my question? Oh, so going back to clients not being a fit for you, I think um, if you're just starting out looking for a personal trainer, I've had a couple over the past like 10 years or so where 
yeah. it just wasn't a fit. And you don't know, you don't realize that someone looking for a personal trainer, you just kind of, if you're new to looking, you just kind of choose who's available because like, you don't know yeah. what's better. Um, but for mm-hmm. someone, say someone's listening that they're thinking about getting a personal trainer, what are some things that they should ask or be looking for to find someone who would be a good fit? You can really pop and fat Nick off with this one. Um, so, so, so this, like, this is what's tough about, like, this is what's tough about the industry right now is there's a lot of information out there, right? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of different trainers out there. There's a lot of different businesses. There's a lot of different styles and approaches to fitness, right? There's, you know, stuff like, you know, what you do, um, like group classes, you know, spinning, um, you know, uh, cross training classes, cross fit classes. So there's so much information out there. It can be like a little overwhelming and kind of like what you were saying is you you almost just have to just pull the trigger, you know what I mean? And just try something. Yeah. You know, cause like one, we can all use a second opinion. I think I was talking to you about this, uh, like a couple weeks ago, just like why personal training is beneficial to everybody. And it's always helpful to at least have like a second pair of eyes looking at you or, or you know, throwing the opinion in, um, just giving you different perspective on what you're doing. Even myself as a coach, like I have a coach. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, I think I think as far as like getting a trainer or getting a coach, it's, it, you know, again, just pulling the trigger on it and, you know, trying something out. And the worst case scenario is you get an opinion from a person you find that maybe they're not a good fit. Um, you get a different trainer, you know, it's, but it's, it's never, I would say it's never going to hurt you to get, you know, a trainer that, you know, you know, might, you find, you might not like their style. Right. But it's still an opinion. They still got you to move. They still got you to work out. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like as far as somebody looking for a coach, like looking for a trainer, like do your best, like apply the knowledge that you have, but don't, you know, don't linger around it too much. You know, that's something that you want to just kind of take that first step, you know? Yeah. Take so, that first step. Take a jump. Yeah, exactly. Just, you know, just start going. Investing in yourself is one of the better things that I've learned to do. Yeah. In my, as I get older. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about strongman. So what, what is it? We talk about that a lot. Um, so strongman, like, what is it? Um, so strongman is basically just a, a strength performance sport where you're moving odd implements. Um, usually it consists of five to six events per show or per competition. And you'll have, you know, a deadlifting variation, an overhead pressing variation, uh, you know, a loading medley of some kind or a moving event or both. And then usually, uh, a loading event like like stones or something um oh. and there can be any combination of events sometimes you might get two moving events or you know uh, maybe even two overhead events but it's uh it's not really consistent so you know i i think a lot of people might be bummed out when i compare it to crossfit in the sense that like no one show is really exactly the same um like no competition you'll ever do is the same events or the same movements for example right so, you always know what the events are going to be when you go. When you're yeah, when you're going into a competition, usually they have them. Uh, they have the events uh, laid out for you probably about twelve weeks ahead of time, and you know you'll obviously train those events specifically leading up to the show. Um, but yeah, it's it's different every time. So you know, like I have uh, worlds coming up in March. I still don't know what the events are yet because um, they haven't. They haven't released them. They might not release them until I think December first, which kind of sucks. But um, that's almost we're almost there. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it's like you know, at this point, it's like you just want to get ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I just want to start going. So, um, but yeah, so it's just a, a wild, wild sport. It's really stupid. Um, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Why do you say it's stupid? Terrible for your body. Like I. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, it's a tough sport to understand, you know, and that's that's one of the things that honestly makes competing in the sport really hard is like people don't really it's it's tough for them to relate to. It's tough for people to understand, you know, the sport itself. 
some people don't understand the difference between like strongman to powerlifting. So they'll think, you know, I'm doing a strongman competition. I'm doing a powerlifting competition. So two different sports. So what's the biggest difference between the two? So powerlifting is just, um, it's one one implement to barbell that's squat bench deadlift and it's the same three lifts every competition in that order um so it's just like power lifting is like a very specified sport whereas strongman like i said is more sim like again you know, it'll piss anybody off over here but it's more similar to crossfit um in the sense that like it's you know randomized and the events are always different so that's you know the really really big difference is that that strongman kind of it keeps you on your toes that's cool whereas yeah powerlifting is just you know three movements that you get to train all year and strongman the strongmen are more useful if i really want to talk shit right now what i said if i really want to talk shit right now strongmen are more useful <laughs> Strongman is the superior sport. <laughs> you're, you're, Both of there's more like you have to be adaptable. There's more. more um, to it, really, there is like I mean, just being able to adapt to different movements. Um, there's there's athleticism uh, to that, and um, you know that's that's one of the reasons I actually you know gravitated to the sport was you know I liked the athletic side of it. I liked the athletic components of it. Um, there's you know there's endurance, there's strength, there's power. So it's, you know, it keeps you in like kind of a wide range of fitness, which some people might not realize because, you know, the, the bigger names are kind of like these big fat dudes. Um, but you know, you might, you might not realize it, but they're, they're in pretty good, pretty good shape overall. They might just be a little immobile. So would you say that, well, we all, I think in 2020, we're now that we're, I don't know how it, anyway, we're, <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, re 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 yeah, rewind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can, we can but I feel like we're all realizing now that what someone looks like physically isn't always, it's never the full picture of, of what they are in terms of health and fitness. Right. Yeah. It's so true. And also, okay. going back to what you said that strongman is terrible for your body, wouldn't you say any sport that you do competitively and like, professionally doesn't toll on your body right so this is where it's yeah i mean that's you know one of the things where people you know why do you do strongman you know why would you why would you pick that sport you know it's so bad for your body it's like well do you think do you think like a linebacker in the nfl is just like oh this will be great for my brain you know <laughs> it's not like he's just like i'm gonna do i'm gonna play this sport because on the other end i'll come out with you know a healthier you know that's not that's not the way they right. approach it it's just your path you know, right you're, you know, 30 years old, you're 25 years old, you're gonna be able to do this stuff once in your life. And it, to me, to me, that's like really what it is, is just, I, I'm gonna, I have super, super optimistically 15 years of this, right? Like very, very optimistically, probably like five to 10 of like real performance of like climbing in the sport, but, you know, that's it after that. I mean, you know, I mean, everybody gets old and everybody dies and, you know, that's the shitty part about it, about it. But, you know, we start to feel like shit when we get old and, you know, this is it for me. So I want to do this and push myself and see, you know, what, you know, what the true, true limit of, of you know, Fat Nick is. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you decide how badly you want it and you proceed accordingly. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. To me, to me, that's it, and you know, that's why I love I love strongman so much. But yeah, it's uh, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. So this has been so now you've done two, you've done the strongman last year and you placed third, right? If I'm remembering correctly. Well, top top third. So it was like the top, top twenty two guys go, and uh, yeah, the top third end up moving on. So that's what. Uh, that's what this was. Uh, this was nationals, and this is uh, so now we all the top third guys move on to worlds. But no, the, my question is this: you've done last year's and now this year's. You've done two competitions so far. Um, no, so so that was my. I think that was my fifth one. Oh. That was my first like real show though. 
like the nationals that I just did in uh, a month ago in October, mm -hmm. that was my first real show. Like that was my first like big show. Like that was strongman nationals, you know, best guys in the country show up to that. Um, but before that I had done three open, mm, yeah, three open competitions and one novice competition, maybe four open competitions. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, there was one where I did pretty, pretty decent. I got third place. Hell yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> you didn't but have to tell us that. It looked yeah. kind of heavy. <laughs> Give this to me, you know, like, I show some <laughs> fucking respect. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till you get to Worlds, Nick, then you'll get the good yeah, one. Exactly. There's hopefully some sort of, some sort of uh, monetary reward for that. But. Yeah. Is there, like, do you win money if you... When, if you win it, if you win it, you get money. If like you, the number one person. Yeah. So that's oh man, I can even get into that a little bit, but we'll we'll roll back around to that. What the hell was I just talking about? Oh, like how many competitions I've done. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've done like a few like local shows, um, and then this year was the first year that I qualified for nationals. So that's like really what all this has been trying to trying to build up get to is qualifying for nationals, getting to nationals. Um, and yeah so this so nationals was my first like real show as i put it um in a pandemic no less yeah no and it was a crazy year to do it and like qualifications were online this year which i was kind of bummed out about i would have rather done like a you know a live show which i think everybody would have would have, would have rather had done um right but you know so how do you qualify made, on what were the online qualification so Thanks. this year what they did was they had like three lifts that you had to hit right um and they set the numbers you know that you had to hit like a minimum number to be able to qualify and then you take you know you record yourself hitting those three those three events um to the weight standard that they set and you send your videos in and mm. if they qualify you they qualify you, you get the invite and yeah was there like a technique with how you had to film it, like a good angle or something like that? Well, yeah, they wanted to make sure you could see the weights and stuff. Like, so you had to make sure you included the weights, include yourself like loading them, include yourself taking them off, showing them. Um, you had to be in the frame of the camera the whole time. If you like came off the frame of the camera at all, like that was immediate disqualification. So it was like a little weird mm -hmm. like that. Like, um, I'm just thinking if, if I had to do that, like, the amount of time it would have taken to pick out my outfit and all that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> now one of them was like one of them was like spur of the moment in my buddy's garage. And you know, because one of one of the events was one of my better events that I was like very, very capable of doing. Whereas one of the other events that I had to, to do to qualify was like not was something I had to prepare for. Um, yeah. the other one of them I was like half naked with like my covid mask on and like yeah <laughs> just like in, a, in my buddy's garage and like this is like, like that's how that's the true fat nick form though like that yeah yeah you exactly. wouldn't expect any less I was, I was thriving in the outdoor workouts like those you know you did you did seem to like it from your instagram yeah you know i did me and me and uh mr shoulders were were really really getting it outside uh back in back in the spring you know before july but uh yeah, I think I think so, a lot of people don't even realize how much like, you know, those new routines. They're not, you know, they're not all bad. Yeah. No, there have been got so much some sun. silver linings to yeah. COVID for sure. This Sunlight. included Spunny Turtles wouldn't have been born. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but going back to the recording, you could have done them on different days versus the qualifying in the past. You had to show up on a certain day and be able to perform on that certain day, right? Yeah, I mean, well, you you actually could pick like the days you did them on, and you didn't even have to do like all three on the same day. Oh. Right. So, which is one of the reasons I I thought it was kind of lame. Like, I would have preferred to have done them like in a real competition for that reason, because it's just it's a better demonstration of strength if you can do all these things in one day versus like breaking them apart when like you feel good and you're ready to do them. You know, wait, wait, go back. So. It, before <laughs> before you had to do them to qualify all at the same time versus now you can do them on different days or the way you would qualify is you go to a show and you win that show locally 
and that qualifies you for nationals. Got it. So this year was just online because of COVID and all that bullshit. Um, so. So they could have been all different days whenever yeah, you felt ready. Have, yeah, you know, I could have done my, you know, my deadlift on Monday and then two weeks later done my, my vlog press, right? So. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I just, that's such a different, that's so different than. It is. And they made the weights really heavy so that, like, you know, it, it was still, like, sort of legit. Like, it wasn't like the weights were, like, local show light. You know, mm. you know what I mean? Like, because the weights get heavier as you advance to a higher, higher level, obviously. Um, but the weights were pretty heavy that you had to hit to qualify. So they at least kind of made it legit uh, in that sense. But yeah, it's still just like more fun to compete. So, but yeah, know, you'd feed off the energy of other people and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And just like being like competing is a better way to get ready for competing. You know what I mean? So I just think. So is the recording how the viral TikTok was born? Um, no, oh, no, 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 that was just, um, so once we have our events, right, we start training, training, you know, the five events that they give us for nationals and, uh, you know, you have 12 weeks to prepare. So that yeah. was one of, one of, you know, one of the 12 weeks where I was training one of the events, um, and in the event, right, it's a sandbag toss, and you're trying to take a sandbag, take mm -hmm. four actually in this case, and throw them over a 13-foot high bar. Um, and it's an increasing, an ascending weight series, right? So it starts at 35 pounds, the next one's 40 pounds, the third one's 45, and the final bag's 50 pounds. So what mm -hmm. that was that day, right? <laughs> was me trying with that 50 pound and if you look at the video there's a little red piece of tape on the wall where I'm throwing the bag to yeah so I had I had like three sets of three in my program to try and get that 50 pound bag as high as I could um and try and hit that red line I had missed every single one right so it was my third and final set that was the third rep. I missed the first two of the of the final set. And that was the last one and the only one of the day that I got to the red line. So when you hear me say yes, it's because I've been trying and failing for like yep. seven weeks for like seven weeks before that and every throw that day. And my fucking sunglasses just came off right then and there. Just look down for like half a second. <laughs> just like, oh, that goes, dude. All right. Well. That sucks. I, I guess I'll <laughs> take the loss. So it's actually like, to me, it's even funnier with like the backstory, just like knowing like I had been trying that for seven weeks before that and like eight throws of that day. So yeah, I was, I was, I was so happy to like have hit the line and just look down at my sunglasses and just, I knew, I knew oh yeah, as, as like really as soon as they fell off, I was like, uh oh, but <laughs> Yeah, once I looked down at the ground, I was like, oh, those are gone. Those are gone. But I always well, train like, everybody, like, to those of, of the people that will watch this, they'll probably want to know, like, what kind of shades they were, because that's what everybody asked. I, I do train with cheap shades on for, you know, in case some, uh, stuff like that happens. So if anyone was, was worried, they were like Ray-Bans or Oakley's, don't, you know, like, we're good. <laughs> Only lost about 40 bucks there, 50 bucks. So that's, um, that's not. That's not bad. You should have set up like a GoFundMe, like replace my sunglasses. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but well, yeah, if anyone that you probably... a pair of sunglasses and then he never did. So I don't, I don't know where that fucking dude is, you know. <laughs> if anyone has, you probably, whoever's watching this, you may have already seen it because it's now on, you like MTV has reached out to you for it, Sports Center has oh, reached yeah. out to uh, you for sorry. the video. Yeah. Yeah. What? I said I have to sign that contract. You just reminded me. They just sent it to me a couple of days ago. Oh, they just sent you the contract? <laughs> yeah. Um, they it's wanted just, rights to the video. It so silly. it's been like all over. But I'll link it below. Unless you want to give me rights to put it in the podcast. <laughs> no, you can you can throw it up there. Before I <laughs> no. you can throw it on there. I'll uh, link it. Um so sweet. But yeah, that was that that whole, you know. That whole thing was even funnier to me just because of the the backstory to it. And, yeah. That is a funny backstory. It was just so it was like that's so weird, like how that went down, just because like I just put it up on my story and my friend reached out to me and just like took it from me and she put it up and yeah, 
went off from there. She was like, this is funnier than you think it is. And I was just like, is it? Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> Made a lot of people oh. laugh. I was seeing like Reggie Bush like comment on, on the video and stuff. That was really cool. <laughs> so. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like so. Seeing like, yeah. Like pro That's athletes. That's like the coolest thing on. of TikTok and this like whole, whole new viral thing. Like, and I Getting feel like it's only exploded in, in 2020 in the pandemic because we're all like recording ourselves doing stupid shit. Yeah. Like, is it, you get like, an average you know person gets eyes on them from celebrities and it's just like so weird yeah yeah i mean it's like you just get your face out there and you know can have a lot of have a lot of benefits but it's yeah it's crazy it's crazy everybody can kind of put themselves out there you know yeah i want to pivot to talk about more things that piss you off like in the fitness industry because we can go there that's yeah i want to go there oh god well like let's talk about maybe the, is there like a new trend in the fitness industry that you want to see go away or come back or i don't know what really grinds your gears there's like it, you almost have to ask me like more of like specific of a question because it's just like good to get there yeah i don't, I don't even know like I would almost be at like a loss for words just because I can't even like, I don't even know where to begin. There's a lot of things that, that piss me off about, um, excuse me, Tito's and Capri Sun's really doing it. <laughs> I don't know what, why, that doesn't even sound good to me. What? Capri Sun Pacific coolers are the best, dude. With Tito's though, I feel like the Capri Sun doesn't, wouldn't like cut the taste out that well. Like it needs, I need bubbles. It's it's better than you think. Okay, well that's I can't make an argument for that. I like I like juice. I do. It just makes my teeth feel fuzzy. I don't like juice. No, you're right. The, like I do, yeah, yeah. But, like a like a screwdriver is such a sicko move. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like uh, I've done that before, just like at breakfast with my friends, and they're all just like. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do like, and then I drank it and I was like, all right, like I totally see why. Like this no. is you can do like a man a manmosa, which is champagne, OJ, and vodka. If I'm yeah. like in yeah. my youth when I was trying to get in one at brunch, like that would be my go-to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um in my youth only. Back in the day. Back in the day. Like as of last year. I kind of stopped that this year. Yeah. Well, I haven't like, been to brunch anymore. You can't well, really like uh, yeah, do it's, that. It's something you have, have to like really a day. For nowadays, you know? Yeah. You really can't like just have yourself a time. Yeah. You know, and if you do, you have to like, you know, there's a lot of ways you have to go about it. <laughs> you have to be ready for like an entire day of eating, basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, the, the, uh, I mean, is it like social media's effect on the fitness industry is something like I could probably that, pop up Yeah, let's go in there then because that pisses me off too, because even going back to what I meant, what we were talking about earlier, like the, how someone looks and how they even like market themselves does not mean they actually know what the hell they're talking about. And like. Yeah the amount of people that get preyed on by these people that just like use their looks and following or yeah. whatever it may be to get people to buy their meal plans or workout plans or whatever it is yeah. drives me crazy no yeah absolutely i mean like it's an information thing it's you know it's uh like a an image positivity thing where you know that it can be you know can really hurt people's self-esteem you know as far as um what they see on social media um mm -hmm. you know so um you know issues with that and also just i think the information put out there you know not only is there shit that's just not accurate or you know things that are just completely useless factoids or bits of information that are like really not applicable um The, 
there's just like too there's too much right like even if even if some people are giving information that's accurate right even if some people are saying you know stuff that's you know maybe not you know may, maybe it is true right maybe what you're saying is factual but the way you apply the knowledge is different than just you know regurgitating information out of a textbook and you know posting it over you know a workout video of yourself yeah you know, so i think the way knowledge is applied can be a little bit dangerous in the industry i think uh <laughs> i think there there's a little bit it's a little bit diluted in the sense that there's so many people so many people with like fitness accounts fitness related accounts i was with a group of friends last night that were giving me a hard time that i don't post enough uh, because they like the strongman stuff, like the strongman stuff's like weird. It's you know like these odd implements. Like it's it's cool to watch, but they're asking me why don't you post more? And I was just like, I just feel like there's there's so many people out there trying to do it that I don't want to like annoy anybody with my shit, you know. And I know that's like a weird way to look at it, and I think a lot of people would would disagree with me, and I think they might even be right if they did, and they make points, you know. And when I was talking to them yesterday, I was like, no, like you, you know few times a week is acceptable like whatever yeah. but anyways i just i just feel like with with all that information out there it's so difficult for somebody you know for a 17 year old bro or like some 15 year old girl to look at this shit and be like where do i begin and you can yeah. just end up doing like a lot of useless shit in your routine you can end up you know being one of those people that thinks they have to work out you know six and a half days a week um you know, it's guilty of that. <laughs> dude, there's a lot of people that are, and it's not their fault. You know what I mean? It's like it's not that 17 year old dude's fault that like he looked at, you know, a page of some 24 year old with good genetics that's had, you know, big biceps since he was 15 years old. How's that how's that kid supposed to know to not listen to so you know it, it's because even if that guy's saying something that's factual, right? What what he's saying checks out. Maybe his training methods aren't necessarily the best for this kid. Or maybe, yeah. you know, this girl that's had, you know, a big butt since she was, you know, a teenager and she's, you know, in her 20s. How's the girl, how's, you know, the younger girl supposed to know that, you know, this is just a case of genetics and maybe this girl's training routine is not for me, right? So there's just a, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of tough information to weed through. It's, it's, it's difficult to weed through the information. Um, you know, and, and it's, I mean, it's true for anything, any industry, any like, you know, um, any community that you're in, like you can get way too much information on social media. And I think the fitness industry is probably one of the, the most affected industries um, by social media. So it's, yeah, I, again, like I, I can even go deeper and deeper into it. Like I can really rant on it, but I'll try to keep it. Even that's like me keeping it short and sweet. <laughs> um uh, not so sweet either but no but it's it's very true and i feel a fitness industry tap, taps into so many of people's insecurities and couple that with the visual aspect of social media and how much, and there's so much like, people hollow, put into it there's so many like hollow claims and you know i'm sure it's true in other industries but you know and i just can speak on this one because i'm in the fitness industry but there's a lot of hollow claims in the fitness industry where people are talking about like you know uh you know it's like a dude saying you know you gotta be comfortable with who you are and it's like well you took this picture in the best possible lighting with your shirt off like it like the the you know like the image you're sending and the message you're trying to get across like they don't match up you know what i mean yeah like it's it's like me saying oh like be comfortable in your own skin but like i'm in like the best possible lighting and i'm like doing my favorite exercise or like showing my best feature or something and you know i think i think for younger people that's dangerous because they think that is like being image positive they think that's like what you know like they get the wrong idea of what what being body positive is right and everybody should be but i think um just the way social media portrays what that is some people get the wrong idea of what what loving yourself is right 
which might yeah. sound a little bit corny for me to say, but you know, it's yeah, it's true. It's you know, no, it's so true. It's, and even yeah, like, dangerous, like, first of all, the yeah. fact that like, some of these kids have smartphones, damn kids. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I hope there's, there's, there's parents, parental filters on those, right? What? They can put like parental filters on that. Because if I had Instagram when I was 12, I would be like, there would be way too many like terrible things in my brain. Uh, I don't know. I don't have children. So okay. I haven't had to cross that bridge. I don't have children either, but I sort of think <laughs> someone's going to laugh. I don't know. I know TikTok is a kid's version of TikTok. God, I would really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, TikTok oh, is a scary yeah. place. You can get into some weird <laughs> rabbit holes in there. Social media, like the internet, it's a scary place, dude. It really is. Yeah, that's why. I'm, like. I, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's filters for these kids. But yeah, it's just, you know, how is, how is a kid that doesn't really even know who they are yet? How are they supposed to filter this information? And how's a 14 year old supposed to know, you know, who's just starting their fitness journey? How are they supposed to know? You know, so that's, I mean, that's, I would say if I could change like one thing about the way social media affects the industry, that would probably be it. You know, just like the way, the way kids receive the information coming off of it. I would try to filter out the useless shit for them. And, you know, cause there's, there's quite a bit of it, you know? Yeah. Just feel like it's a beast that can't be filtered anymore. It's yeah. just like, how, how can you? Yeah, not at all. So. Um, let's talk about, so you, you mentioned your, your Instagram um, and the yeah. clients that you have. How do you find more clients now? Because you, you now don't work with a gym. You're completely self. Well, no, you do actually. Tell well, me about your business. Everywhere. I'm literally everywhere. So, you know, and this was, I mean, true for a lot of like trainers and coaches this year is, you know, you either, you either get with it or you're out of the, or you get out, you know, <laughs> that's, that yeah. was the reality of it. I think that's the tough reality that, you know, some people may not admit is the reality, but it's, you know, really the world we're living in right now is, um, you know, you either make it or you don't. So we, we all had to kind of adapt and do what we can, you know, whether you're doing like online coaching or FaceTime, FaceTime training, um, you know, virtual sessions. I've been training people outdoors, I've been training people um, in their garages. And yeah, now, you know, as we've gotten later in the stages and, um, you know, I think towards the end of the summer, I started training clients uh, in my gym in Natick. Um, but yes, yeah, so as far as like getting clients at this point, it's been a lot of, a lot of uh, like word of mouth referral. Um, I've had some people like, you know, obviously my, my social media has brought people in from my past where they say, Hey, you know, that's where a good amount of my online coaching business comes from, um, which makes sense. But yeah, I mean like really, really wherever you can, you know, pull clients from is, you know, the way, you know, what we've had to do is what we've had to do. Um, the, the industry has been pretty crazy this year. So advertising is different you know obviously like using your social media as much as you can which i'm guilty of not doing i don't i don't like <laughs> like i said earlier when i like say i post too much like that's one of the things i'm like like timid of doing for like no reason i don't know why but yeah it's like something i should probably utilize more a tool i should utilize more but yeah it's just you know word of mouth and i would say this is the biggest one and you know um uh, a lot of, a lot of clients retained from the past and, you know, some people come back, you know, so it's, it's crazy. It's, you know, it's just a crazy way to, to make a living and you do what you can. It's a roller coaster. You're just riding the wave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to make it go up more often, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you're doing great. I, even I like though that, you don't yeah. post on Instagram even, that much. Even right now, you know, um, you know, this, this year has been not so bad for me as it has been for many. So I'm, I'm really lucky to say that. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. If anyone's listening and they're interested in talking to you about personal training, how can they find you? Well, they can find me at fat Nick, right. On Instagram. That's probably the best way, honestly. Um, and I'll link that below. Yeah. 
Fat Nick, I, I mean, you can email me, you know. My Where sister. does Fat Nick come from? Is it just a joke or nickname? Well, I think my last Instagram name was really heinous, and I think that was the reason it changed. Like, it was just not not a great Instagram name. Um, and I think I just wanted to be Fat Nick. And I think I tried it with an F at first, but somebody already had that one, obviously. But uh, P-H-A-T Nick was, was not taken. I think I like P-H-A-T. Yeah, no, I think it's F. grown on me, too. I like, I like Fat Nick, so. Um, it's here to stay. Yeah, I'm not going not gonna to change the handle anytime soon, it's for sure. As of right now, are you taking new clients? Yeah, I'm always taking new clients. Um, like I said, like I do online coaching where I just uh, program people on, on Google Sheets and I take okay. uh, in-home sessions. You know, I travel to people, um, not during the winter, but I was meeting people like in fields, even if they wanted to do that. Some people were a little bit more comfortable with that, just with like more, more open, you know, obviously. Um, so that was just something where like we each brought some equipment and, you know, did what we can out there. And like I said, it was, I mean, like, you, you know, this year was really just about adapting to the industry and like doing what you can. So I'll, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of good coaches out there were able to adapt with what they have and get creative and, you know, find, find a lot of ways to, to stay in shape. And that was really what, that was really what the spring was about. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm everywhere and, you know, I'm even in uh, a gym in Natick right now too, which is my personally my favorite place to be. So, you know, if people want to train with me, that would be where Center I would in the area. Yeah, I would yeah. prefer prefer it out there, but but we yeah. do what we do is hour one hour twice a week with the weights that I have at my house, and we FaceTime and get it done. And if you think it won't be as hard as in the gym, yeah. yep. you're wrong. I want to die every time. Boy, do we get it done. We get it done. <laughs> get it fucking done. Fat Nick's got the iced coffee, just Cheers sipping it every time. Yep, exactly. All right, Nick. Well, thanks for joining Sweating Shirtless. This has been a great conversation. Yeah. And... I, mean, I hope. Uh, I, hope <laughs> I hope it wasn't too colorful. Like sometimes I can be a little colorful in the way that I. No, we like that. It's sweating yeah. shirtless. All bets are off. You know. Uh, <laughs> a little, a little tough to get the. The real things I'm trying to get out, but uh, you know, yeah. Hopefully you Love can it. use, it, you know. What? But hopefully this is useful, you know. Hopefully you can use this, and yeah, glad I could be on. It was fun. Good, glad I'm could glad. A little bit about strongman, but uh, you know, if you have me on again sometime, I would love that. I can do this again. Sure, we can do a follow up. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's up to you. Season two. I was fun. thinking of like. Blocking it into like seasons one, season two. Yeah. Like ten episodes each or something. I don't know. I've been thinking thinking about yeah, it. That'd be, dope. that'd be dope. Yeah. Anyway, thanks again. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Thank I you. will talk to you soon and I'll see you on Monday. Yes, you will. All right. See you later. Bye.